morning and welcome to Business Connect. And Business Connect is brought to you by 100 Talks, an entrepreneurship media platform that focuses on you. My name is Palumi Folonsha and I'll be your host for today. Last week we had Joshua Chibueze, the a co-founder of Piggy Vest, a fintech company. And he spoke to us about wealth creation. He spoke to us about so much about wealth creation and how to really use the Piggy Vest platform to actually help with wealth creation. So we're going to continue in that vein this week. This week we have a very special guest. We have Charles Oddi, the founder of SME 100 Africa and also an author, the author of 21 Questions on Entrepreneurship. And he's going to be talking to us today about access to finance. All right, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. Welcome back to Business Connect. And Business Connect is that radio show it's brought to you by 100 Talk, an online media platform focused on entrepreneurs and youths. Now, today, we have, before we went on the break, I said we have this very special guest with us. We have the founder of SME 100 Africa and author of 21 Questions on Entrepreneurship. And today, he's going to be talking to us about access to finance. Now, before we speak to um, Charles, I'm just going to head over to the 100 Women's website and see what's bubbling there 100 women is the s is the women's arm of sme 100 africa that focuses on empowering women and everything women we have so many articles there for women empowerment we actually have different uh, one of my favorite articles recently m recently on the blog is how to take tips on how to maintain healthy natural hair it's something that all women really want to you know pay attention to so if you want to talk if you want to learn about how to take care of your natural hair please head over to the 100 women website and we also have things for entrepreneurs as well we have how to identify your target audience as an entrepreneur and also red flags in social media so head over to the 100 women website www.100women.ng to learn so much about women and empowerment you can also follow the social media handles at 100women.ng on instagram and all social media platforms all right all right so let's just head over straight to our special guest for today hello charles how are you doing hi Kodome. thank you for having me especially this morning all right all right so we're just going to i've given a brief introduction of you right. you're just going to just give us just introduce yourself to us a bit more um okay so my name is charles Odi, and i'm the founder of this uh, amazing organization called sma 100 africa um it's basically a small business community organization focused on um, ensuring that small businesses in Africa succeed regardless of their social economic background. And we do this by ensuring we democratize access for these small business owners. And so access to finance, and that's to say that um, have, helping them get capital to start businesses and expand businesses. And you know, some, in some cases, we loan them the money. In other cases, we connect them with the partners um, who will give them this money for business growth and expansion. Um, second is access to market. Uh, many of these small business owners, we help them, you know, um, break into new markets. Uh, and that's by basically just giving them some form of visibility and other times um, helping them with insights into the markets they like to break into. Um, the third is education. Um, we're very big on trainings. We train week in, week out. We're helping these small business owners, first of all, understand their target audience mm -hmm. and just basically helping them um, you know, with the right mindsets to, to navigate the, the economic terrain here in Nigeria. The fourth is our network. We have an amazing, an amazing um, span of network that has our mentors, our mentees, mm -hmm. partners, stakeholders. And then we, we believe that, you know, leveraging on this network, we can help grow and expand whatever small business um, there is in the community. And the last is mentorship. Um, we have this um, amazing mentorship program that we run every year um, and they're broken into different quarters and the goal basically is just to get seasoned, experienced um, small business owners who have run businesses for over 10 years to mentor people who are just coming into these diverse industries with um, three years or less um, experience. All right, all yep. right. That's that's amazing. That's that's such a different idea. That's something that is not really common in Nigeria. So I've, I, we've you've said so much about access to finance, access to markets, and everything. We're going to talk about that later a bit. But 
I wanted to know what was your inspiration? What actually made you? Because it's not something a lot of I've not really heard so much and so many companies in Nigeria doing that. So what actually what was what was the idea behind? What was the inspiration? Um, so the the inspiration to helping small businesses to democratize access is basically growth, growth for society, and the biggest enemy of growth is survival. Um, so if you have small businesses just you know thinking about how um, to go. To, to survive, thinking about um, how to raise money, thinking about how to just get contracts or thinking about how to sell without, um, a, without a platform that's helping them to better structure so that they can actually grow. We will not have that kind of ripple effect and development in society. And so myself and my friend basically looked at um, Nigeria's um, economy back in the day. Um, and if I tell you that if you travel um, if you travel out of Nigeria, you hardly see Nigerian products um, in the shelves of uh, bigger supermarkets. And then, you know, every year over 60 million young people are churned out of the educational system in Nigeria. And there are no jobs for these people. Um, and 70% of Nigeria's population is under the age of 35. So in, an innovative way to reduce the high rate of employment in Nigeria is to take these young people who are coming out of school and get them to think inwards. Let them think within themselves on how they can solve the unique problems that exist wherever they live and not basically having them to um, always go out and look for jobs because the, the truth of the matter is that there are no jobs. And if, if, you, if you look at a graduating class, um, if you say 100 people graduate, maybe like 30 people have come out with like two ones or two twos or first class and two ones, those are the ones that they, they, they take first. So what then happens to the two twos and the third class? They have to think within themselves yeah. to actually look for how they can solve problems. Um, by day, by so doing, we come in and we help them to better structure their ideas or whatever business um, venture that they, they're seeing, whatever problem they're trying to address in society so that it can do two things, right? So they can grow and they can have economic mobility and more so so that they can employ more people and reduce the high rate of unemployment in Nigeria. Also, there's this, there was this problem we found out that um, businesses in Nigeria usually do not exceed their founders. Mm. And so when the founders die, um, the business die with the founders. Uh, but, you know, when you're starting up, you, you build your business around people. Yes. And the next phase is building your business around processes. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that, you know, they understand that rudiment of building the business so that the businesses can outlive them. So some of the, I don't know what kind of car you came in today, if you, but I just want you to know that the Ford that you, you drive, the Toyota, the Honda, these are people's ideas <laughs> yeah, that people's have outlived ideas, them yeah. and they are exportable from wherever they were produced into Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that the same thing happens to Nigeria as well. You know, I know back in the day, um, if you look at greater China, there was a time China locked the economy. You know, the Americans out, the, the Europeans out, they actually even banned visa for... I think it was a couple of decades ago yeah. and they shut themselves in and they found out how they were going to develop China. So they went from um, fake China to dirty China. But look at China today, you know, because they had that process where um, they, they sat within themselves and they saw how um, they could become relevant in, in today's economy, global economy. Um, I'm not saying that we should shut our, our borders, but I'm saying that brilliance exists everywhere and we, we see potential in almost everyone. And then if we can just get to that person and help them to become their partner of potential, which where there's no telling the ripple effect on what their business will do and how it will then change the economy. All right. That's that's an amazing I'm I feel like the one thing entrepreneurs and everyone should really, you know, focus on is finding a, a problem, finding a problem and trying to solve the problem. I think that's what you've done, you know, finding you looking for solution to problems. And that's what can help really a lot of entrepreneurs in this day. That's such an amazing initiative. Thank you so much. All right. So before we go forward, we're just going to, before we go forward, before we go on our break, we're just going to ask you, you know, go straight to the main question of the day. How can small businesses actually, you know, leverage off cap? How can they get capital for their businesses? How do they, you know, get that access to finance? Is there, is there enough for businesses to really get capital? Is there enough? And thank you so much for me for that question. Um, so before you go on the break, I'll just um, <laughs> I'll just start talking, and then when we start yeah. for the break, let me know. Um, so capital today is expensive, and, and and I will explain what I mean by it's expensive. It's also very scarce, right? Um, when you want to borrow in Nigeria, for instance, um, which is the most common um, um, access to finance, everyone just thinks about a bank loan. 
and I'm sure that by, by the time we're done today, um, we would have exhausted other sources of, um, of, of finance for small business owners. Um, but what I was going to explain about capital being very scarce is that there are not a lot of companies that are actually lending to entrepreneurs in Nigeria today. Yeah. And then those that are lending are lending at a ridiculously high um, interest rate. So that makes the capital very scarce and makes um, the capital very expensive. Now, so for other sources of income, um, I, 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 I've written a book, it's titled 21, 21 Questions on Entrepreneurship. Um, and this book, basically, someone asked me a question about that in, um, in one of the chapters. And, and I try to answer from a rudimentary perspective up until um, um, scaling up uh, that, that ladder. So first of all, as a small business owner, um, the first thing you want to do when I say that you need two things um, going into business. One is the skill and the, the two is the market, right? Skill is, let's say, for instance, you want to go into fashion design. You want to have the skill to know how to sew, how to cut, how to measure, how to produce yeah. a, fine, a fantastic um, um, outfit. But the second thing is you also want to know that there are a lot of people who are actually available to buy that product um, that you're, you're, you're trying to manufacture. And so um, the first source of finance that I think that you should um, try to consider is bootstrapping. Bootstrapping basically right. is just you, you know, saving your own, saving money. You know, you've put together um, that fantastic plan on how you want to scale, but just you putting aside some money every month on your own and trying to just um, try not to spend the money. Um, last week you spoke about starting to save money with yes. um, a platform. You know, you can leverage um, those kind of platforms to just put aside money and you can do that digitally right now um, with the guests that you had last week. Or you can just even put out away manually. And then so if you had a target for like a hundred thousand naira to start a business, um, I, I believe that if you start at the beginning of the year to put out some money at the end of the year, you can actually even start that money. You can actually even start that business with the money that you put aside from your own savings. So the first one is bootstrapping. It just basically means you saving money and you putting it aside money. All right, all right. So we're just going to go on a break now. If you're just joining us, Business Connect is that radio show that's highly stimulating and engaging radio show that brings together the radio audience with an active online community of people with the desire to be entrepreneurs. We also interview entrepreneurs every week, some business experts who just share their journey and their experience on doing business in Nigeria. Today we have with us an amazing guest. We've been speaking to Charles Audi, the founder of SME 100 Africa on access to finance. So we're just going to continue that conversation. Before we went on the break, Charles was telling us about access to finance and we're just going to kick off from that. So just from where you left it off, please. Oh yeah, thank you. So um, before we went on the break, um, I was speaking about bootstrapping, which is one, um, um, one source of um, income for capital for small business owners. And the second is a very popular one, which is bank loans, right? Mm -hmm. Bank loans is basically you going to the bank and trying to um, get a loan, get some money to either start or grow your business. Now, um, sometimes I advise against bank loans because, um, you know, the interest rates are very high. And these banks usually do not lend to small business owners, right? Uh, the ones that they lend to, they tell you to go bring like a land, a, a, a property, yeah. not like, not a land right now. They tell you to go bring like a house in Lagos. Yeah. Not many small business owners have that Actually as have a collateral. It, yeah. And, you know, some other times they tell you to bring someone in public service within um, level 12 and above. You know, so some of these things are actually, you know, what... Um, it's a big barrier for these small business owners yeah. um, trying to get money from a bank. But a bank loan is a um, is another um, source of um, finance for small business owners. Now, the, the third one is basically a grant, right? So I'm going to explain the difference between a grant and, and, and a bank loan. So the grant, um, you usually do not have to pay back. Um, but the bank loan, you have to pay back, and sometimes you pay back with interest, interest especially yeah. uh, if, if it's a, a loan with interest. Now, for like a grant, um, organizations actually give grants. Like um, we or, we organize like a pitch competition every year where we grant small business owners um, the one who are very successful with their yeah. pitches, and that money you don't have to pay back. Other organizations do the same, but what then happens with grants is that sometimes the grants are released in different faces. So if you have a project, for instance, or you have a small business, for instance, um, to 
produce um, bread, for instance, um, in your community, right? And you've been granted by an organization. The organization will basically look at the, the project you're trying to um, do and then break it into phases. So when you actually phase one, let's say phase one is just procuring the, the bread, um, the bakery equipment, and you know, just setting up the place where you achieve, they give the money for the, to achieve phase one and it's up until you've achieved phase one that you can then unlock the funds for phase two yeah that, that's how some some grants are structured well basically grants are tailored towards um societal development projects or entrepreneurial development projects where you don't have to pay back um so that's grants that's known as bootstrapping the third one it will be cost something that i've seen customer vendor relationship right so um if you're selling in lagos right many times you don't have to really uh, you don't have to really uh, get a lot of capital to start, yeah. right? Especially if you've done the two things I said are important before going to business, if you have the skill or you have the market. If you have a market, let's say, for instance, you are in a church, right? And then you, you, you go to church and then you have, or you in your estate, you have someone who has a need to get like, um, by the way, your hair is nice, mm -hmm. to get this kind of hair. And the person is probably like a busy person and the person or the person probably does not have that time and you have the connect to get in it. What you can then do is then you can go to the person who sells, the supplier or the retailer yeah. and get that product, you know, and then supply to the person, you know. But in that in that, in that um, time frame, the currency is basically like trust. The person has to trust you, you know, and then give you, um, and give you that, that product so that you can you can mark up make some money and then keep some for yourself and that profit again if you go if you do that trip two three times you know you can actually have started a business <laughs> yeah. without even using your own money do you understand so you just need to understand where the supply is where the demand is and meet it you know get the demand first take that demand to the supply meet it and mark it up and make some money and so that's it that's a phenomenal way especially those who are, who are in associations who are in clubs that's a way to start uh, and grow um, um i just wanted to piggy bank on what i said um, from bank loans loans and, and grants okay. you can actually even get um something that seemed family and friends okay. you can actually get <laughs> tell us more about that <laughs> you can actually get money you can actually get a loan from a family member or a friend okay. it might not necessarily be like a bank loan um, you can get from your husband, you can get from your spouse. Um, but what you need then is just to convince them beyond reasonable doubt that mm -hmm. you've figured it out. You know, you know, the project is going to be a success or this, this thing, um, you've tested it and then you can see that there's some return on investment if you venture, mm -hmm. you know, and then, you know, it doesn't, the money doesn't necessarily need to come from the bank. It can come from your father, it can come from your husband, it can come from your wife. You know, so that's a, that's another phenomenal way um, to you know get financing. And so if you have that rich uncle, now's the time for you <laughs> to reach out to him. All right. Um. So we can. There, there are also other ways. There's the angel investor and the venture capitalist, okay. right? Okay. Um. The difference between these people and your family and friends is that these people are not related to you. They're going to give you money, and they're going to give you money only on the basis of um, business success, mm -hmm. when they can see that this business actually has potential for success. Now, um, these angel investors sometimes come at um, pre-seed stages, other times they come at, um, at take-off stages, or other times they come at scale stages. And what they, what they eventually do is look at the business plan, look at the business model, look at how much you're generating, look at the potential, and then they can then invest some money into the business for it to for it to be successful. Um, another very important way or another very important um, access to finance that I've, I've put here in my book, um, which is not very, very, very popular in, in Nigeria, is crowdfunding, right? right yeah. I don't know if you, you have any. All right, all right. We're just going to take, there's a caller. We're just going to take that call for a child. Hello, good Hello, morning. Hello. Good morning. Where are you calling from and who am I speaking with, please? Sorry, I can't really. Your name is. I've written one. It's a child that you say such amazing. So, I would like to ask a question. I mean, I'm a business man. I'm a business man. You're calling me 
Sorry, Mr. Tony, I, I, I didn't get the question. You've been applying for loan. Uh, did you get him? Yeah, I think he said you've been applying for loan and then is there any quick way to make money? Quick way yeah, to make money? because loans are not effective. <laughs> I think that's what Mr. Tony, the, Tony to, was saying. get the money for, for his, uh, I mean, to his business. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so that's what we're just talking about, Mr. Tony. So if you've been listening, um, um, excluding the bank loans and i said um it doesn't have to be a bank loan the loan can come from um family and friends the loan can come from your association um the loan can come from your uncle your spouse um uh, other um, very important ways is uh, yeah you haven't let us know what kind of business that you do but you know there are some grants um there are some grant funding organizations that you know you can key into to get some grants also um Depending on what you're trying to achieve with your business, you can also bootstrap. You can set you can set some money aside, and you know, um, and try to achieve what you want to achieve. Also, if you can get like an investor to invest in the business. Um, also, if you have if you have some relations, um, something that like have customer vendor relations, um, you can um, leverage of that to also get um, some funds. And I'm just gonna before. Um, before the call came, I'm just going to talk about um, government as well. So government has yeah, some intervention. Just go into yeah. that, yeah. government has some intervention for funding. Um, I know that in Lagos, um, there's this um, agency set up the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. Um, they give some form of funding um, in terms of loans, but they are high, very low interest loans um, for small business owners. And you know the CBN, um, the BOI has some other. Um, um, funding initiatives as well for small business owners. But the last one, um, which I was going to say, is crowdfunding. Um, you can get a couple of the, you can get on some crowdfunding websites um, and then try and raise money for your business or your initiative. Uh, many of these crowdfunding websites um, have some some rules that you have to abide by, and um, some sometimes they just take like a percentage of having helped you raise the funds. Um, so. You know, these are innovative ways that I think that you can get access to finance um, and you can get your enterprise going. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Before we go, I just want to ask, do you have any advice for entrepreneurs and business owners, you know, growing to start a business, starting something, you know, in, starting an initiative like yours? You know, what do you what advice would you give them quickly before we end the show for today? Um. So. My advice for um, young and aspiring entrepreneurs is basically um, persistence, right? It might not go right the first time, you know, and, and you know, you need to get up and get at it again. Well, when you're getting at it again, you have to, you have to get at it differently, right? So if you tried something the first time and it did not go, it did not go the way you wanted it, um, find out why it didn't go the way you wanted it, get some information as to it, and then try at it again. Like, be persistent at it, never give up. Go at it and try and try and try. You only get lucky once. You only need to get lucky once. You don't need to get it right once. And when you get it right once, um, it's the, the you know how to say the sky is the starting really. point. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much today for joining us, Ms. Charles. I really appreciate you joining us on the show today. And we have so many questions, but that'll be all for today. And you can join us every Wednesday by 9 a.m. on Metro FM 97.7 to meet with some amazing and experienced entrepreneurs and also follow at 100talks.ng on Instagram on all social media platforms to learn so much more about entrepreneurship and all. also follow 100 women at 100women.ng and also at SME 100 Africa on Instagram and all on all social media platforms and that will be all for today hope you have an amazing Wednesday thank you and don't stop talking business my name is Palumi Folonsha See you next week.